I mentioned that I've been fighting it lately. Gone are the days of shooting in the 70s in the Golden State. I'm back in Chile, Canada, and so far the experiment with my new sticks has been a disaster. That doesn't mean we turn the camera off and stop posting scores. I've always wanted my channel to show honest golf, and this is the part of the season where I'm grinding out scores, like here at Morgan Creek. The last time I played Morgan on the channel, I opened with a solid 39 by keeping the ball in play, which I fail to do here, and being tidy inside 100 yards. And after dumping my approach shot in the water, now I have to be tidy inside 100 yards, only in order to preserve a double bogey. My wedge left me with about 35 feet there, but it's a good lag putt, and we'll have to accept a double on the opening hole. The driver has been giving me a ton of trouble since returning to Canada. The smother hook is my miss, but it seems that right now, everything with the long sticks is hooking quite a bit. And here on two, back-to-back -back hooks mean that my approach shot on this par five is actually from out of a hazard. But we're going to lean on the game inside 100. We do manage to get it on the green from the hazard. And our second lag putt of the day is also pretty tidy, and we'll have a tap in for par. The wind was howling at Morgan. Here I'm grabbing a 160 club for a shot of about 190. It was the right stick, although it misses the green a bit to the right. That's a good blind pitch into the green, and I'll have about 15 feet for par here. And that's a great up and down. The fourth is a quirky little hole. It calls for about a 200 yard shot off the tee, and I execute that fine here. And on the approach, I'm ignoring the number to the stick and playing for the back of the green. I execute on that properly, and now it's time to lean on the flat stick. But this time I misjudge it. I fail to account for the downhill, and unfortunately I don't quite find the comebacker. My drive on five doesn't hit my intended line. I'll be left with about 130 from the left rough. And I chunk this one. And I did a rare thing while I was in California. I took a lesson. A pitching lesson at PGA West. And I'll have that for you on the channel soon. And don't worry, it wasn't the first step of a swing overhaul. It was just a small investment in my happiness. Because I like to invest in things I'm passionate about. In fact, when I first moved into my own apartment, I bought several Van Gogh recreations that I still have today. So when I first heard that I could own a piece of actual paintings by the old masters, I was curious. I always assumed this was an asset class reserved for billionaires. But there's a platform changing that called Masterworks, and they make it possible for people like me to invest in these pieces of high value art. So while I may not have millions of dollars to invest in a Van Gogh, I can peruse Masterworks library and invest just a few hundred dollars in anything from a Picasso to a Banksy. And I don't have to stress about the art because Masterworks has a proprietary data set and a team of expert investing in only the best pieces. I love being able to invest in something I'm passionate about and diversify my portfolio. And the best part is that contemporary art pieces have actually outperformed the S&P 500 by 164% in the last 25 years. It's also seen almost triple the appreciation of real estate, gold, and 90% of cryptocurrencies during that time. With rampant inflation and the stock market frothier than it's been since the dot-com bubble, lots of investors are looking into alternative assets like art. In fact, 85% of wealth managers recommend investing in art as part of your portfolio, according to Deloitte. If you want to take advantage and invest in art, Masterworks has a waiting list. Over 400,000 people have signed up so far. But you can skip the wait list and start investing immediately by clicking the link in the description below. Back to the golf. Today, well-struck drives into wind in soft conditions are going 200 yards. Here I'm trying to hit one hard, and wouldn't you believe it, this one rolls all the way into the water. So just like the first hole, now I have to lean on a wedge just to preserve a double. It's amazing how keeping balls in play allows you to maintain scores, and how putting them out of play immediately leads to big numbers. Yeah, nice little draw. That's a nice trajectory, but like I said, today those are going 200. And for a guy already missing left, put the ball above my feet, and that's about what you're going to get. Of course I follow it up by overcompensating and pushing this one out to the right. And I'm in a tough lie now to a tucked pin. It's not the prettiest of outs, but at least I'll have a makeable par putt. I overread that one a bit and we'll settle for bogey. 
I fail to account for the fact that we've now turned with the wind helping us. And this time I hit my 180 club about 210 over the back. This is another long lag downhill. And I'm not giving them much respect because they recently punched greens here. But that one I had to give a bit more respect to. I blow it about 6 or 7 oh, feet by. Hair left, but I, I might have pulled it. And I have to settle for a bogey. Back into wind. And it's another 200 yard drive. I'll have about 160 in. And that's not a shot a lot of people associate with single digit handicap golf. But I promise you it happens. What we do afterwards is what matters. Hitting a horrible shot and getting out with a bogey is just fine. And that's exactly what I proceed to do here on the ninth hole. And this scorecard on the front is a reminder that scoring variability is real no matter your handicap level. Last time we were 39 on the front, this time we're 44. Last time we were 43 on the back, and we're hoping to do a bit better than that today. I've dialed the wind noise down a bit for you. That's by far the best drive I've hit with the new driver, and it goes all of 230. Now from 200 in off the deck, I also hit it well, but I'm still left with 30. The ground is pretty wet here, and I'm trying to get the feeling of bruising the ground. I told you I just took a lesson on this. But lessons aside, sometimes you're still going to do this. And just like that, after two great shots, now I'm trying to scramble for bogey. And maybe I'm compensating for the last one. This time I accomplished just getting it on the green. But it's not exactly a tap-in, and I have to start the back with the double. I'm 10 over through 10, and rather than pouting, my spirits are actually high. I feel like I found something with driver, and all this round really needs is a turning point. I chunked a chip on the last hole, and this one isn't great either, but at least I'll have a makeable putt for par. And for the first time all day, we gain momentum by making a long putt. The golf gods giveth, the golf gods taketh away. Because just when I thought I had figured out the driver, the smother hook comes back out. The plan is get it on the green here, and I do. This is a tricky lag because this pin is on a spine, but the weight's pretty good, and I'll knock it in for back-to-back -back pars. 13 is easily the prettiest hole at Morgan Creek. The entirety of it is framed by the North Shore Mountains that you see in the background here. And if ever there were a way to seize the momentum of back-to-back -back pars, it's by making birdie on a par 5. That is not a swing that's in balance, but nonetheless I'll have about 12 feet for birdie. I really want this one, but it's not quite meant to be, and we'll take a par. This shot was entirely saved by a game improvement iron. I've been talking about what a failure the experiment with the new sticks is. But the real conclusion is that it's not the tools, it's the operator. And in fact, there are some tools that can help you mitigate your misses. This place is stroke hole 2 at Morgan Creek, and I refuse to believe that the yardage on the cart is right. All three of us hit good drives, and all three of us had about 200 in. That's a horrible effort there, but at least it's safe. And it's back to leaning on the wedge game. That's a great pitch there, and I'll have a look at getting out of here with a par. But the golf gods taketh away. And the golf gods giveth. This is only playing about 110 yards today. That's a full pitching wedge for me. And it's right on the number. But I push the birdie putt. And we'll settle for par. This is a gettable par 5. I step into this one, and it's by far my best drive of the day. And then I do that. But if ever there were a way to encapsulate my game in one hole, it's this. Follow up the bad shot by absolutely striping one, give myself a makeable birdie, and drain it. I got about 275 out of my drive on the last hole, and I'll get closer to 175 out of this one. Speaking of the unexpected, watch my camera here finally fail to conceal the fact that we're basically playing in the dark. By the time we're pitching into 18 here, it's hard to see where the ball's going. But that pitching lesson paid off. I have a makeable par, but not quite. It's a bogey on 18 for 3 over on the back. 
But that's a pretty decent job of reeling it in. We're 83 for the day, which will go into the computer as a 9.9 .9 differential. Meaning that despite everything going on today, we managed to play like a single digit handicap. I maintain that more people can play to this level than they think. It doesn't require swing overhauls, it doesn't require endless time at the range. For me it's been an exercise in just grinding on the golf course, and I'll have more on that soon.